Dear colleagues, I'm Alexander Ribó, a researcher from National Institute of Health of El Salvador, and I'm going to show you a little bit of our recent study titled GIS-based map of malaria risk in El Salvador. This is an effort carried out by a multidisciplinary team formed by researchers from different institutions. And the National Institute of Health, Ministry of Health of El Salvador, and Koblenz Landau University. First, I will give you a short introduction about malaria in El Salvador. And then I will speak a little bit about geographical information systems, also known as GIS, as a tool for building risk maps. Then I will tell you which is the purpose of this work and I will speak about the several steps followed to generate the GIS-based map of malaria risk. After, I will show you the main results, and finally, I will summarize the final conclusions of the research. Now, I will uh, give you a short introduction about some topics that we will use in this presentation. Malaria is a life-threatening disease caused by parasites that are transmitted to people through the bites of infected female Anopheles mosquitoes. About 3.2 billion people, almost the half of the world's population, are at risk of malaria. The most vulnerable people is located in developing countries, especially in tropical and subtropical areas, due to the poor health infrastructure and the low sanitation conditions. Risk of malaria can be defined as the probability of developing malaria over a specified time period and mainly depends on environmental risk factors and social risk factors. El Salvador is a small country located in the Pacific coast of Central America and malaria was a serious problem in El Salvador especially during the first half of the last century. Today, malaria is almost eradicated in El Salvador, with fewer than 20 reported cases per year since 2011. However, its immediate neighbors, like Guatemala and Honduras, have among the highest number of malaria cases per capita in Central America. On the other hand, geographical information systems, also known as GIS, are a useful tool to combine different risk factor maps in order to generate a disease risk map. For example, a malaria risk map. Risk maps are an essential tool to design prevention measures, especially in countries like El Salvador, where uh, the successful results to mitigate lead a reduction to resources invested to this disease. El Salvador has a tropical climate with a dry season from November to April and a wet season from May to October. And it is affected periodically by tropical storms and sometimes by hurricanes. As other Central American countries, it is located in a high volcanic and seismically active area and has a landscape heavily influenced by volcanic geomorphology. El Salvador presents several swampy areas, especially in the coast. Main water bodies are dams located in Lempo River and also are uh, volcanic lakes. El Salvador has the largest population density of continental America, and this population is mainly concentrated in urban areas like San Salvador, Santana or San Miguel. The main objective of this study is identifying at national level areas of potential risk of proliferation of Anopheles mosquitoes and therefore proliferation of malaria. We carried out this study collecting GIS public databases from different institutions like 
Ministry of Health of El Salvador o Ministry of Environment. From these public databases, we uh, obtained environmental and social risk factors. For example, we obtained the environmental risk factors that we obtained were land use, hydrographic network, accumulated rainfall, average daily temperatures, road network, and slope. And the social risk factors were population density, illiteracy rate, residential marginality, and community health centers coverage. All data were harmonized in a standard formats. Raster maps from each risk factors were generated through GIS analysis. Lateral distribution of each risk factor was defined, codifying zones as low, moderate, and high contribution to malaria risk. The risk factors do not have the same role and the weight in the modeling of the final malaria risk zones. Uh, therefore, a multicriteria evaluation known as analytic hierarchy process was used to define the weight of each risk factor. The weight of, to each risk factor was given using a pairwise comparison method involving the following steps. The first step was uh, to construct two pairwise uh, comparison matrices, one for environmental risk factors and another for social risk factors. The second step was to evaluate the consistency of uh, each matrix. These matrix were defined and constructed by a multidisciplinary group of specialists and uh, the final weight were defined by consensus of all of these uh, specialists. Now I will show you the main results obtained in this study. Through GIS tools, different risk factor maps were generated. In this slide, we are showing the environmental risk factor maps. Uh, you can see the temperature maps, the land use map, the slope map, the distance to water bodies map, the distance to road map, and the rainfall maps. Maps for each season wet and dry season were defined for weather risk factor maps, rainfall and temperatures. As you can see, there is large differences between season in rainfall maps and only small differences in temperature maps. This slide shows the maps of the considered social risk factors. These are population density, residential marginality, illiteracy, and community health centers coverage. Here we present the two pairwise comparison matrices, the environmental risk factor matrix and the social risk factor matrix. Both matrices were defined by the multidisciplinary group. Matrix containing environmental risk factors shows the most important factor is rainfall, followed by the temperature and distance from water bodies. On the other hand, the, the other matrix shows that the most important social risk factor was residential marginality.
followed by population density and illiteracy rate. This slide shows the final risk factor maps. Above, we can see the environmental risk factor maps, one for dry season and another one from, for wet season. And then we can see the social risk factor map. All these maps were obtained using GIS software and uh, the raster cal calculator. In general, we can see that all the maps present higher risks in the coastal area and uh, especially in environmental risk factors, we can see that this slide shows the final risk malaria maps. These maps were obtained through aggregation of environmental and social risk factor maps. We consider social and environmental risk factors with similar importance, therefore the same weight was given to them. Wheat season present higher risk than dry season. And as we identified previously, coastal areas present higher risks. In general, wet season presents moderate to high risk in majority of the country, while dry season show low to moderate risks. Now I'm going to summarize the main conclusions of this study. The final results are given in form of a suite of GIS malaria zonation risk maps. These maps have been wheeled through 10 malaria risk factors considering both environmental and social factors. These maps also consider the weather differentials in the different seasons. Final maps show variants of malaria risk at municipal scale, which convert them in a valuable tool for predicting malaria at local level. This work scale allows to the decision makers use design intervention for malaria mitigation from municipal to national level. Present risk maps are valuable tools to maintain appropriate disease response capacity, optimizing resources. Present study demonstrate the importance and possibility of using former public databases together with GIS tools and the analytical hierarchy process for obtaining a low-cost malaria risk assessment tool. Harmonization of all gathered information can serve for further applications to evaluate risk of other vector-borne diseases. And finally, we can say that the incorporation of entomologic data together with field observations and former epidemiological malaria data could be useful to test all these models. Thank you very much for your attention.